77. How do I determine what level of progressive discipline is appropriate to the offense? Four criteria can help you determine the most appropriate level of discipline to employ in any particular circumstance. 1. The severity of the offense. 2. The employee's past performance record. 3. The individual's length of service with your organization. 4. Your company's past practice in dealing with similar infractions. Follow the traditional disciplinary paradigm of 1. Verbal warning 2. Written warning 3. Final written warning Unless starting with anything less than a final written warning could make you appear irresponsible. Courts have ruled that employers are obligated to fit the discipline to the offense. A slap on the hand isn't appropriate, for example, when egregious conduct occurs. That s why sexual harassment or discrimination findings typically start at the written or final written stages of discipline, even for a first offense. Tell me more. Conduct-related infractions typically provide employers with the most latitude in composing a company response. Take the case of employee theft or embezzlement. Such misconduct warrants immediate termination. A summary dismissal is appropriate because you can t-send a message that says, We ll forgive you this time, but if you do it again, you'll be fired. On the other hand, Performance or attendance-related infractions typically require employers to provide full workplace due process in the form of written and final written warnings. Remember, you're irresponsible for treating like cases alike, that doesn't mean ULL necessarily treat everyone the same way. Employee transgressions don't exist in a vacuum. Sleeping on the job, for example, may warrant a written warning for a first offense when committed by an attorney or financial analyst. That same infraction might warrant a final written warning for a head nurse in charge of a hospital's intensive care unit, because such behavior could jeopardize patient care. If committed by an anesthesiologist in the operating room during a procedure, sleeping on the job might justify a summary discharge. As you can see, Sleeping on the job isn't the only issue, the circumstances surrounding the act of sleeping on the job play a crucial role when determining available remedies to ensure that a particular behavior is not repeated. In addition, a first-time offense committed by a 20-year employee most likely won't be treated as harshly as an offense committed by a new hire during his introductory period. Finally, from a standpoint of fairness, Realize that employees who are disciplined for inappropriate conduct or poor performance often share their concerns with their peers. It isn't uncommon for war stories to be shared, and disciplined employees learn how the company has treated others in the past who engaged in similar conduct. If your response differs greatly from and is more aggressive than your organization's past actions, realize that you'll not only have a morale problem on your hands, you may also be legally challenged to justify the apparent inconsistency of your actions. Inconsistent employment actions in and of themselves are not unlawful, however, if such perceived unfairness occurs against a member of a protected class, it could be interpreted as discrimination. Be careful to review your past practices before doling out discipline or termination. This should become a routine part of your performance management system.